Let's look at cascading style sheets or CSS. So um, CSS, cascading style sheets, are meant to give format to HTML documents. So as we said before, HTML describes contents and CSS should describe how it looks. So for example, sample, the colors we use, the fonts we use, the letter spacing, the margins, the alignments, the indentations, or everything to do with format. So a basic CSS syntax rule looks like the one we see on the slide. It puts some kind of a selector. It selects the elements or task that the rule is applied to. And then it adds property value pairs. Properties indicating some uh, aspect of the element to be selected, its color, its font or whatever, and some value that we want to give that specific property. Let's look at a couple of examples of selectors. We can have a selector that indicates uh, properties for all the elements of a specific type. Here we see an example for H3. So all H3 headings will have the properties that are uh, put there in the CSS rule. So the color will be red, the font size is 10 and the font weight is bold. So this is a, lector, a, a, a CSS selector that applies to all elements of type H3. We can also have other type of selectors, for example based on IDs. We see an example here, it says hashtag first and the text font is 20 points. So the selector is first and it says every element that has the identification first will have text font 20p. So how do we write this in HTML? In HTML, if we make an element, we say, okay, the identifier of this element is first. And then the CSS code makes sure that that specific text will have text font 20 points. So here, this text here, which says first paragraph, will be 20 pt. We have another way of writing selectors and that is based on classes. So here we see an example of CSS code that say point red. So it's the selector that says all the classes red should be color red. That's what the CSS selector rule says. In the HTML code, so what we do, we say, okay, here we have a par paragraph and I want it to have the same style as all the classes that are read. And then effectively, the text in that paragraph will be read. So this is three ways to select the uh, selectors in CSS and assign property value pairs to it. So where do we put this information? Where do we place this CSS style information about the uh, uh, contents of your website? So there's three ways to do it. First, we can put it inline in a particular element, or we can put it in a style element in the head section of our HTML, or we can use an external file, which is the best solution. But let's look at the other three too. First, is inline CSS. So we place it using uh, the style attribute in a specific element. So this overrides any other uh, format issue that can we have defined everywhere. And this is not recommended because then it's very locally defined how you want to make specific things look and then content is not so separated from the formatting, which is recommended. Here's an example of the P um, tag, the paragraph, and here we just say we want a paragraph and we want a style to be of color blue. So this is very locally inline style information in an element of the HTML. The other way to do it is to embed CSS in the style tag of your HTML document. So here we see the head tag that we've seen before, that defines the heading section of our HTML page. And within that, we can use the style tag to say, okay, the style of all the, the, the text that is in this web page should be that P is color blue. All paragraphs should be the color blue. Also, this is not recommended because as we said already several times, content should be separated from formatting. 
So the best way to do it, which is recommended, is have an external CSS file because this also uh, increases reusability and separates the concerns between contents and style. So the way to do that is use the link tag in your heading section and just say for style in this document use this external styling.css file. And then all the styling that is defined in that external document will apply to our website. And this is actually the, the way it's recommended to do. In the next part we'll look a little bit more on JavaScript.